Greetings and blessings to you, your family and your church. Now in this video you will get insights and perspectives about the real mission of the John the Baptist. Why and how was God working with John is another important topic. I learned all this uh, new understanding and insight about God's providence from the teaching of Father Moon. It made my relationship to Jesus Christ deeper and more personal. Father Moon was only 16 years old when at an Easter night in deep prayer and meditation he had a direct spiritual and life-changing encounter with Jesus. Father Moon got chosen, ordinated and consecrated so Jesus to continue his mission on earth. I present in short today the new perspectives and insights through my study and reflections. What was the real mission of John the Baptist? John is one of the most known prophets of the Old Testament and also the last one before Jesus came with the mission of the Messiah and second Adam. The return of Elijah is fulfilled in the mission and person of John the Baptist. God said he would send the prophet Elijah to prepare the way for the Messiah. God wants to make sure that people recognize and follow Jesus when he is on earth. To prevent that the Israelites would not recognize and accept the Messiah and thus be cursed. Elijah was the greatest prophet of the Old Testament, second only to Moses. He lived during the period of the divided kingdoms and his mission was to separate the people from Satan's influence by exposing the emptiness of ideal worship and destroying the prophets of Baal. Unfortunately, Elijah was unable to complete his mission in his life on earth and it was passed on to his follower Elisha. The next 400 years from Malachi until the birth of Jesus was a time for the Israelites to prepare to receive the Messiah, rejecting ideal worship and uniting in worshiping God and living according to their Torah was their God-given task, because this separation from evil was not completed in the 400 years before Christ. Malachi had to return in spirit and power. His unfulfilled mission has to be fulfilled with a new chosen person, John the Baptist. This is very important to realize why God has prepared John to fulfill the mission of the returning Malachi. In Malachi 4, 5-6 we can read, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes. And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the land with a curse. How to know and understand the real mission of John the Baptist? A hint gives the situation before the birth of John in the temple with Zachariah and the angel. The angel spoke to Zachariah the high priest in the temple and told him that his wife Elizabeth would have a child, who they were to call it John, and said that he would be the Elijah figure foretold in Malachi. In Luke 1, 14-17, the angel told Zachariah in the temple, and you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at this birth. And he will turn the hearts of the sons of Israel to the Lord their God, and he will go before him, him that is Jesus, the Messiah and Son of God. He will go in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready for the Lord a people prepared. In Luke 1, 76, 
it says, And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways. In John 1, 6-8, we can read, There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came for testimony to bear witness to the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness to the light, to prepare people for the Messiah by calling them to repentance and baptism, to tell everyone that Jesus was the Messiah so that they would believe in him and follow him, to be Jesus' main and first disciple and supporter. In Matthew 3, 1-2, we can understand what John did to prepare the people of Israel for Christ. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, was his message. John baptizes in John 1.29. We can understand. John baptizes Jesus and gets a revelation from God directly and declares, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. So it was not automatic for John to understand who is the Christ, who is Messiah, but he got a direct revelation from God. And John testifies in the Bible, we can read in 1 John 32, 34, John testifies that Jesus is the long-awaited Messiah. And John gave this testimony. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven like a dove and remain on him. And I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, The man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and I testify that this is God's chosen one. This means that God revealed John who Jesus was. So it was not that John found out by himself, but he got a revelation. In John 1, 17, 18, we can read that John would have become the closest disciple of Jesus and then would have been many prophecies of the Bible fulfilled because the Bible was telling that the kingdom of heaven should become and the prophecies of Isaiah would have been realized. John 1, 17-18 John should have become Jesus' closest disciple. Then the Jewish people and leaders would have accepted Jesus as the Messiah. The prophecies in Isaiah would have been realized. The kingdom of God would have been established. With this Acceptance by the Jewish people, Jesus would have united with other religious groups in the East that they were awaiting a Savior too, and finally convert and transform the Roman Empire. John should have become the closest disciple of Jesus, uniting with the religious leaders, and the Jewish people would have accepted Jesus as the Messiah. So the kingdom of God would have been established with other people and other groups. The prophecies in Isaiah would have been realized. Isaiah 9, 6-7 and 53, 6 we can read. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom in order and uh, to establish it with judgment and justice from the time forward even forever. The seal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. In Matthew 6, 9-13, Jesus is teaching us the Lord's Prayer, and this Lord's Prayer is containing God's plan for us, how we should live. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. This means 
praise God in your daily life. Your kingdom come, your will will be done. This means to have hope and strong will. On earth as it is in heaven, God's vision and plan to be fulfilled should be our daily thought. Give us today our daily bread. Don't take things for granted. Be grateful. And forgive us our debts. Be humble and repent, as we also have forgiven our debtors. This means we should forgive, practice Jesus' teaching, and lead us not into temptation, not to follow Jesus, for example, or to live a sinful life. But deliver us from the evil one means to really live a holy and sacred life. But what happened? John denies. What did he deny? John was highly respected, but is not understanding his mission of the second coming of Elijah. He just doesn't know it. Either his father didn't tell it, or he forgot it, or he had other reasons why he did not commit to this mission of the second coming of Elijah. So the people came to him and Pharisees and to ask John directly what he thinks he is. He was such a great preacher. In Luke 3.15 we can read, As the people were in expectation and all men questions in their hearts concerning John, whether perhaps he is even Christ himself, John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but he who is mightier than I is coming the song of those sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. This shows John was not clear that he should be in the mission of the second coming of Elijah. It sounds humble, but actually John should have realized to unite and follow Jesus. Turning the hearts of Israel to Jesus, this would be his primary mission. But he distanced himself. He said, yeah, this other person, he should he is greater than me and he will do greater things than I. But I will go my own. In John 1, 19-21, and this is the testimony of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites. There's another situation. From Jerusalem to ask John, who are you? He confessed, and he did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, what, what then? You Elijah? He said, I am not. You a prophet? And he answered, no. What a catastrophe. This shows John is unsure about Jesus. On the ceiling, painting in the ship of the church in Obernzell, Germany, is the scene shown John the Baptist in prison with the disciples. John is sending to Jesus to ask the question who he is. In Matthew 11, 2-6 we can read, When John, who was in prison, heard about the deeds of the Messiah, he sent his disciples to ask him, Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? Jesus replied to the disciples and to John, Go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. So John denies being Elijah, but somehow testifies to, to Jesus. When, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to John, he said, I'm not Christ, which was true. And when they asked him, what else are you? Are you Elijah? He said, no. Are you a prophet? No. How can John say something like this? Surely he is a prophet. Surely he was the one who is turning the hearts of the Israelites to God. And finally he should have turned the hearts to Jesus. The river of Jordan Looks like John forgot completely that he had an experience directly from God. Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. God told him directly who Jesus was. But looks like he forgot it. He testified to Jesus, but in a very private manner. In John 1.34 we can read, 
And I have seen and borne witness that this is the Son of God. But who was there? There was not many other people there. Only Andrew, uh, the brother of Simon, uh, Peter, then, and John. And they went immediately to find Jesus and to follow him. Andrew told his brother Simon that they found Christ. And he brought his brother Peter to, to Jesus. In John 1, 38, 39, we can read that. Was this, was John stopped testifying to Jesus in a bigger scale? Was John fearing that he is losing all his disciples? John 3, 25 to 26, we can read something about disciples of John follow Jesus. John saw Jesus as the bridegroom and himself as the, his best man. This understanding was in God's eyes not enough. If John follows Jesus himself, John would be very happy if all his disciples followed Jesus as well. So why John was in prison and finally died in prison? If John had been about his father's business, to concentrate and focus on his prime mission, to turn the hearts of the Israelites to Jesus, the second coming of Adam, the Messiah, and would have followed him, surely John would not have been arrested. Because we can see on the reaction of, of uh, Jesus <clears throat> when he heard that uh, John the Baptist died in prison, he, Jesus withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place and the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. So Jesus was very upset about the death of John because it meant that the person who was supposed to tell everyone about him, to testify that Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus cannot testify about himself. He needed the John the Baptist that he testifies for him. And this meant that the mission of Jesus became much, much more difficult and there was a real possibility that he, uh, Jesus would be rejected. Can you imagine? So John was in prison and uh, we can read that he had criticized Herod in fought Matthew 14, 3 to 4. And uh, because Herod took the wife of his brother Philip, John criticized him. And uh, for this, Herod put him, put John in the prison. And Philip's wife, Herodias, she asked the head of John to be chopped off. You can all read this in the Bible. It's really a sad story. And the question of John out of the prison did not change anything about it because John was in prison and he was about to die because it was decided that this criticism on the Herod was not justified because he pointed out correctly but they wanted to get rid of him. And when John heard in prison about the deeds of Christ, that's why he sent again disciples to him and asked, shall we look for another or are you the one? How can he ask such a question? John got the direct revelation from God. This question of John reveals that he is no longer sure that Jesus is the Messiah. He is doubting his own revelation, what he received from God directly. And he asked this question and undermining his testimony, what he gave at Jesus' baptism. This means that people who respected John would also start having second thoughts about Jesus. And even more, the Pharisees and scribes, because they knew if Elijah did not come, the Messiah cannot be there. And Jesus cannot be the Messiah if Elijah did not come first. Now they would have legitimate reasons not to believe in Jesus. So that's why we can understand the response of Jesus in Matthew 4 to 6. Jesus answered, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. Lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the good news preached to them. Blessed is he who takes no offense at me. Jesus couldn't say, yes, I am the Messiah, without discrediting himself completely. So he asked John to judge him by his deeds. You shall know them by their fruits. Jesus' command that the poor have the good news preached to them is full of irony. 
he's not happy that he is not preaching to the religious leaders, the elite, the people who ought to have the foundation to be able to understand him. They knew the Torah in and out, and they would have been doing and could support Jesus and unite with him. So without John's support, Jesus' mission became much, much more difficult. So he needed John to be actively testifying to him, especially to the Pharisees, scribes and leaders in Israel, and then even to the whole world, the Roman Empire. God wants to save the world, not just Israel. Imagine, Jesus got on with his mission and he had to find now people on his own to follow him. Basically, Jesus had to fulfill the mission of John the Baptist. So John didn't make it into heaven because he didn't obey and follow Jesus. In Matthew 11:11, 11, 11, Jesus says something very strong. Truly I say to you, among those born of women there has risen no one greater than John the Baptist. Yet who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Imagine what this means. So this was a harsh judgment on John. And we can understand that Jesus was very, very sad and unhappy that John did not support him directly and got involved in second things, which uh, finally led to his death. So Jesus went to the desert and prayed there for 40 days and fasted for 40 days. Jesus took responsibility for John's failure and restored his mission. In Matthew 4, 1 to 11, we can read and see, was led by the Spirit. Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. I can imagine. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Jesus answered him, it is also written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. And again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms, kingdoms of the world and their splendor. Satan could only do that because he owned all this. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left. And angels came and attended him. Jesus finds his own disciples. Matthew 4, 18-22 Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee. He saw two brothers. They were Simon, other name was Peter, and Andrew his brother. We remember Andrew was a follower of John and followed Jesus immediately. And he heard that Jesus is Christ. So they were putting a net into the sea for they were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Follow me, I will make you fish for men. At once they left and their nets and followed him. Going from there, Jesus saw two other brothers. They were James and John, the sons of Zebedee. They were sitting in a boat with their father mending their net. Jesus called them. At once they left the boat and their father and followed Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So Jesus preaches the same message as John in Matthew 4.17. He says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So big crowds were with Jesus. In Matthew 7.28-29 And when Jesus finished his sayings, the crowd were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority, not as their scribe. The popularity that Jesus had soon led to jealousy from the traditional religious leaders because so many people followed Jesus, and Jesus spoke with authority. Galilean Spring, a revival started. In Matthew 4.23 we can read, And he went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every infirmity among the people. 
the ordinary people were attracted to Jesus. Matthew 4, 23-25 And he went about all Galilee teaching in the synagogue, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every disease and every infirmity among the people. Probably the Pharisees didn't like that Jesus preaches in their place and where they were supposed to preach and diminishing their authority. And great crowds followed him from Galilee and the Decapolis and Jerusalem and Judea and from beyond the Jordan. So that's why the opposition of the people grows, especially the scribes and Pharisees were jealous because Jesus was so popular. Jesus was a very controversial person and they disagreed with his teachings and he stirred up the Jewish people and of course many of the religious leaders came to oppose him <clears throat> because he did not tell them nice things that they were good. They had to change, to repent also. In Matthew 15, 1-20, he had such an encounter with the Pharisees and scribes. They wanted to question him and put him in a trap. They came to Jesus and asked, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? They don't wash their hands before they eat. Jesus replied, And why do you break the command of God for the sake of your tradition? Tradition is not everything. For God said, Honor your father and mother, and anyone who curses their father and mother is to be put to death. But you say that if anyone declares that what might have been used to help their father or mother is devoted to God. This means like um, the ends justify the means. They are not to honor their father or mother with it. Thus you nullify the word of God for the sake of your tradition. You hypocrites! Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. Those people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far away. Me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. So Jesus called the crowd to him and said, Listen and understand. Jesus did, wanted that the people understand, not just blind face. What goes into someone's mouth does not defile them, but what comes out of their mouth, that is what defiles them. So still the Pharisees disagreed with his actions and his explanations. But even the disciples did not understand everything. They came to him and they asked him, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this? And Jesus replied, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be pulled up by the roots. Leave them. They are blind guides. If the blind lead the blind, both will fall into the pit. But Peter still did not understand and asked Jesus, Explain the parable to us. What about the parable? It was quite plain what Jesus said. And Jesus asked Peter, Are you still so dull? Don't you see that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and then out of your body? But the things that come out of a person's mouth come from the heart and these defile them. An uneducated man like Jesus dared to lecture the educated scribes and Pharisees. They had another view of a Messiah how he should behave. Jesus challenged the hypocritical lifestyle and teachings of the elites and leaders. This was another critics of him. Out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander. These are what defile a person. But eating with unwashed hands does not defile them, Jesus was explaining. The Pharisees and leaders should have repented and realized that Jesus is a man of God, the Son of God, and that he teaches God's truth. Remember, Jesus came to bring complete salvation. This is what Jesus would have brought if he had been accepted. Jesus' prayer would have been realized in his lifetime. The kingdom of heaven would have been established. Hallelujah! There would be no need for a second coming. In Matthew 6.10, Jesus is saying, Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Because John the Baptist did not realize and accept his mission as the second coming of Elijah, Jesus had to build his own foundation. 
We will continue in the next lecture about Jesus' life, mission and victory. Thank you for your attention. God bless your week and days to come.